my my face mm-hmm. is like a lot of ladies' legs right now. <laughs> I can't, you know, the the shaving thing, I just give up. I can't do it. It's Bristley. I'm Corey. And I'm Jared number 14. (laughs) That's a nice name. This is the ISOcast. It's just getting crazy right now. I I can't speak for your side of the provincial territories, but in our territory, Uh this has been a, this has been a rough couple weeks again, man. But in the news, yeah. We're like international news. When It's never good when people outside of Canada are talking about Quebec. It's just no. never good. It's like no. Alabama. It's never good when anybody <laughs> brings up Alabama. <laughs> you know, something's like, oh, here we go. They either lost a football game. Yeah. Or. Those that uh, are our international community or outside of Quebec or living under a rock, good for you. That's a good place to be. Mm-hmm. We are still under curfew again <laughs> since we last spoke <laughs> they, they locked it down and uh, everybody had to stay home snug in bed after 10 p.m you know it's bad when you can say the word still and again in the same sentence right and uh so what's the curfew so it's between 10 p.m and 5 a.m okay and they they did this yeah. Hmm. Okay. So <laughs> prior to Christmas, they were like, oh, we can't take your... I think we talked a little bit about how our, our gatherings of 10 had to become gatherings of six. Mm-hmm. And then after Christmas, it was like, uh, we're going to lock down the province now. And there are no private gatherings. Those are prohibited. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to, well, put that curfew back in place between 10 and 5 so that you delinquents don't go seeing each other after 10 p.m., because the prohibition of visitation is not enough. And then here's the the icing <laughs> on this, you know, tortière is we've decided <laughs> that on Sundays all non-essential businesses are closed. Oh. <laughs> so, really? You want to go buy groceries today? Yeah, no. On the day that basically everyone buys their groceries. Well, I guess that's the point. I don't know. Now all of this uh, changes tomorrow. Curfews lifted. Sure. Because success. COVID's over. COVID's over. And uh, I think the stores are going to be open again on Sunday because it worked. And our uh, health minister quit. So we're looking good. <laughs> we're looking really good over here. Well, I'll, I'll take that and I'll raise you our minister of long-term care quit. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> That's a good time to retire. Cheers to that. Exactly. Mm. Well, so, we're you're you're worse than us, but we're you know quasi locked down again, and gym, all, you know gyms are closed, no indoor dining. We're back on that kind of train, so yeah. you know we, we beat this this drum to death. It is what it is. It sucks, but you know here we are. Do you believe this this notion that we are um, past this this Omicron peak at this stage? I have I have no idea. Okay. I I'm at the stage. I'm I'm not. I don't know. I don't know. Have you run out of like you know? I'll be frank. Have you run out of fucks to give about some of this? <laughs> no, I'm, I don't think I'm there. I just, I mean, I don't, I've stopped following a lot of it. To, and again, here we go. Like, I'm very lucky and privileged that it doesn't affect a lot of, you know, what I'm, I, I can just stay in my basement. I can stay home and work from home. And I've kind of just not followed the 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 trends and the, the numbers and up, definitely not on a daily basis. So, um, you know, I, I don't really, I don't really know. I know it's, it's still out there. I know that it's not as dangerous, whatever definition of dangerous you want to use, but I also mm-hmm. know that the hospitals are full again. So, yep. you know, my, and Maya's working back in the hospital now and every shift she goes in and she says, this is how many positive patients we have today. So, you know, it's, wow. it's yeah. out there. I mean, it's, it's, it's a real thing. I don't know what it means in terms of severity. I'm not going to make a statement on that, but you know, no, no it's not, it's not over. Well, it's the old, um, you know, I remember once upon a time, a guy said to me, try to buy our company. And Hmm. he's like, do you want 50% of a grape or do you want 10% of a watermelon? I'm like, well, it depends on what I feel like eating, to be honest. But 
let's suppose that there's something to that. I guess the, the notion is the hospitalization rate, even though the severity is, you know, not necessarily as high, the number of people still jamming up the hospitals is considerable and unmanageable and untenable eventually. Right. So I get that. Where I learned during this process, I try not to follow it too terribly closely because it's just sort of... It drives you nuts. Yeah, it drives you nuts. The, the difference between someone in the hospital for COVID versus mm. with COVID right, is like not the same thing, <laughs> right? Because, you know, a necessarily one in the hospital needs a different level of care and treatment if they're ad- admitted and then they're, you know, diagnosed as having COVID. So they got to go to a whole other thing, you know, I get that. So sometimes the numbers, I think maybe it's not relevant that doesn't matter. I mean, the hospital's got this many people with COVID in it. That's it. Well, that's, I mean, that's it's interpretation of the numbers is something that, you know, we, I need more education on. And I, I don't even know if people know what, you know, is it positive cases? Is that relevant? If it's not as, if Omicron is not as severe, is that really a number that, that matters? Is it hospitalization within that? You know, how do we differentiate between what you just said is that even important you know what is the measure of and i think again i feel we're back in episode one what is the what is the pr for from here for covid what is the what is the yardstick what is the measuring stick what is the and i know it's not black and white it's not just let's pick one and do that because it's not that simple but what is the objective and what does our favorite phrase flattening the curve actually mean does it mean this many people that are in hospital with whatever does it mean that we can go ahead and perform the non, non-COVID related um, surgeries and procedures that aren't happening, at least in Ontario on, on, for the most part right now? Does it mean that schools can be open? Does it mean that you know, go down the list? So, you know, what, what do those things mean? And Groundhog Day, because I think we're back to we don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's we sit here and chat expertly about things we don't really understand. But from yeah. what I've always gathered is it's just trying to spread the rate of infection over a longer period of time, not necessarily trying to prevent infection. And I've booked my, my booster shot Look at for you. tomorrow. I'm going to co- I'm going to Costco. Not between 10 and 5 though, at night, I'm sure. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Which raises another interesting set of uh, problems that have been introduced in Quebec. If, if you care to know some of the, the latest in the Francois Legault I saga of managing know. this pandemic. Which, by the way, I felt prior to this, he had a pretty good handle on things. You know, a few missteps, understandable, and there's no playbook. I get it. But yep. now, uh, it's really starting to feel like they're making up it as they go along. Mm. Any store over a certain square footage or square meterage requires you to have a vaccine passport to enter. So if I want to go to Canadian Tire, okay. I have to demonstrate that I'm vaccinated. If I want to go buy cannabis at the cannabis store, or I want to go buy liquor at the liquor store, I have to prove that I'm vaccinated. So this is now they're starting to expand into further areas of retail, demonstrating that you're vaccinated. Was that not the case before? It was not the case before. That was restaurants, um, bars, clubs, you know, those sorts of things. Are those still open? No, they're closed. No. All yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, what kind of world are you living in? Yeah, no, it's the bizarro Lego world over here. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> so now we're at this place where, as an example, if you want to get your say vaccination done at Walmart, where a lot of people do, you can't get in. Sure, because you're not <laughs> vaccinated. <laughs> so, Wait, yeah. th- that's not that's not a thing. Like that's real. That's that's one of the you can't go in issues to get that, yeah. vaccinated because you're not vaccinated. Right, right. That's like an Abbott and Costello thing, right? Mm-hmm. It's crazy. It's it's where we are. <laughs> it's exactly where we are. The squeeze is on, right? To try and get the people who are not yet vaccinated vaccinated. So sure, they're going to pull out sure. every all the stops. This is just the next one of how far can we continue to push well, people's civil rights? I may have a, a solution for Mr. Lego. Um, albeit quite an expensive solution, because this is what we did last weekend. Um, Ontario lockdown as well. Well, you know, usually about two weeks after you folks out there in Quebec. So about two yeah. weeks later, we we did our lockdown sans curfew. We didn't do that. Um, but, you know, as you do when you get a lockdown, you go out of town. <laughs> so sure you do. we did a little out of town last weekend. Uh, on, sa- on Saturday, I'm going to visit a little bit of a ramble, but uh, one gift that Maya got for Christmas from her sister was this little cool 
I've never heard of it. A little company, and I'll get the name of it here in a second. But they give you like a travel, a, a road trip, day trip kind of itinerary. Oh. That's kind of like Amazing Race. So you don't know where you're going and you open envelopes along the way and you get to, after you do one stop, then you open the next one and then you find out where you're going. It's actually really cool. Um, so on Saturday, we went down and did a little southwestern Ontario and down to Elora and to Fergus and to that kind of area and really, really scenic and did some hiking and didn't know the stops along the way. But um, St. Jacob's, another one. Really, really nice. You're like and, 45 uh, minutes from where I grew up. I know. <laughs> Mennonite County. Yeah. Uh, so we did that. That was really fun. And then on Sunday, um, we went to a spa in Grafton, Ontario. Grafton. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, but long story longer. So solution. Expensive. But at the spa, they have... You, you've been to airports, right? Mm-hmm. One. Mm-hmm. You walk through those security machines that you know. You walk through that they, they beep if you have the little nickel in your in your pocket. Or Do something. I put my hands up? Is that one of those those machines, or is it one of the the golden arches where I go through time? Either or, I okay. guess. Uh, no hands up in this case. But the spa had this or has this looks like look alike security contraption. Except you don't walk through it. You just look up into this yeah. camera. Yeah. And the light turns green when it tells you that you don't have COVID. That can't what be a it, thing. What it does is it kind of reads your obviously temperature, but it also gauges you for symptoms of the most com- of most common symptoms of COVID. So everyone who walks in, where is your vaccination status no. one? No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait. oh, it's oh, this is cool, man. This is cool. I think this is, this might be a thing. <laughs> this is like <laughs> it's like gaydar. It's not real. <laughs> It's not a thing. There's no you don't machine. think gaydar is real? You can't point a machine at somebody and tells you of your COVID. Like I've heard of the COVID sniffing dogs. I'll buy that. Like, oh, that's, this person has COVID. Oh, what's that? Yeah, there's dogs. You can train them to sniff out COVID. Is there an odor for COVID? For a dog. Okay. Not for you and me. It's not like somebody gets in the car and it's like, ooh, I think you got COVID. <laughs> well, that would solve a lot of problems. <laughs> if everyone stunk. <laughs> Oh, that would be great. Like That's in the solution. Charlie Brown, where there was that cloud of dirt around somebody. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. I, we're at this place again, I think this year where I'm feeling, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling the dip mm-hmm. where it's like, it's dark at four o'clock. Oh, we're Oof. in lockdown, you know, um, the beer just tastes a lot better <laughs> all of a sudden. We're getting and 20 meters of snow apparently tonight, so I that's know. coming too. Yeah, Schools are supposed to open tomorrow, but now they're not because no, we're, they're not. No. you know, Toronto can't uh, can't plow the roads. So. Same here in Montreal. They're having a snow day tomorrow. So <laughs> just, just when the parents thought they're going to have a little bit of a break, not a chance. Yeah, it's a challenge. I, I want to I want to try and navigate at some point in in hindsight what the strategy was because i think maybe in five six years public record will allow us to kind of see Mm. what the conversations were we can't today but you know i I don't know i don't know i feel like the the horse was out of the barn before christmas on this thing there was nothing we could do just let it go you know i'm Mm -hmm. i'm again i don't want to be that guy who goes a little bit uh conservative about this but i do want to say you know, there's a there's a moment where the fatigue sets in and you want to say just just let it rip just let it rip just let it rip yeah i'm not going to tell that to anyone's 91 year old mother no right <laughs> let it well, rip, this, grandma. Is, this is definitely a time where i i remember when we first started doing the show and it took a while i think for one of us to say yeah i know someone who has covid like no oh, there was, was one right. person here one person there i know a bunch of people who have had it in the last you know, since Christmas, which is yeah. only, you know, two and a half weeks ago, three weeks oh, ago. So, well, yeah, I mean, uh, my, my business partner ripped through his family, you know, they spent uh, the last week, got a visit from aunt Corona. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as, as I think it was put, I think they have, they have funny ways in the South of saying it. <laughs> it sounds like they're okay though. <laughs> I think they're fine, you know, okay. but you know, they, they got hit Yeah, like everybody is. It's just for me, I'm, I'm going to go get the old booster because frankly, I don't, I'm not interested in getting uh, sick. I, I still I don't like it. No, right. But moreover, there's every indication that our vaccine passports are going to be a, a three dose is considered 
fully vaccinated situation here. So I'm just going to get ahead of yeah. that curve. Until it's four. And then, you know, and I'm okay with that. Like I got my booster on, on New Year's Day. On January 1st, I got oh, my booster. Year. So I think, yeah, it's absolutely Oh, and a happy good new way. year. Is it too See, late? I don't know when we, no, it's never too late. Well, if we haven't seen each other since, right? I don't, pandemic time again. When was the last show? I don't know. Was it two weeks ago? Was it, it was three? before I don't Christmas, know. wasn't before, it? Was it? I don't know. Time blends, man. I don't know. It's got that blur. We talked about Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll check speaking of, uh, well, not speaking of anything, but I got a little letter in the in the mail yesterday. Something mm-hmm. that uh, I got called for jury duty. <laughs> You're a juror. That's why juror number fourteen. Oh, you're gonna I've ne- you're never what? done it before, and now we're, in three weeks. I got to go in at eight thirty in the morning and show up at the courthouse. I, this it comes is your from civil uh, duty. This I don't know if you've so ever cool. done this. But, no, I haven't. Uh, here in look, Ontario, look at me. you think they're gonna be like you should really totally be sitting on a job? <laughs> I'll go in there and then go. No, go home. I didn't know this was a thing. I don't live in the Wild West, but you get a letter from the uh, the old sheriff's office. The sheriff. The sheriff. <laughs> That's the new sheriff in town. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess there's, I mean, obviously they're still doing it. So I'll be the, the masked juror. So, <clears throat> uh-huh. and then you don't have any indication, obviously, until you get there, what you're going to do, right? No idea. February 9th, 830, which is a Wednesday, apparently. And uh, I'll okay. show up and we'll uh, just see what happens. And then you, oh God, you probably can't talk about it or anything. I don't know. Well, I don't even, like, who know? I don't know. I mean... Just talking to people and what they do on TV, I guess they like <laughs> pick people. There's like a whole bunch of us and they're like, no, you're not this. You're not this. You're not this. That's the only source of information we have on our civil duty is what we see on American television. <laughs> well, I'm pretty else? convinced. I know how to get out of it. I think people talk about that. I don't think I've ever talked to someone who actually went through and, and did it. It's just one or two racist statements and you're good to go. I think that's it. And off I you, but I mean, it. you strike, me as, don't work. Of, you strike yeah. me as the kind of person that would like to be on a jury. Do I? You do. You've got mm. juror written all over you. <laughs> yeah. City juror, not rural juror. Uh, no, 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 no. I think, I think you're right. I think it could be okay. Yeah. You know what? You're going to be a foreman. They're going to choose you to be the foreman of the jury. <laughs> and it says in my little letter here, you know, they don't pay you for the first seven days if it goes that long. After seven days, you get like a hundred bucks or something. A day. So, a day. And, oh, imagine if you got sequestered. I know. Right. Uh, well, this is, this is my curiosity is like blooming because w- do they do that during COVID? Is that not, is that a thing? Like, do, do you have to like get tested? Yeah. What do I have to think? Like, all of these things. If you do have to like, you have this so, big murder trial, like whatever, like, yeah. what, what, do I have to stay with the other jurors? Do we each like get they're not on Zoom? You're not all on, it's not the jury's on Zoom. I was very surprised. I thought it would be. Because that would be really great. I could totally just sit at home and be a juror. Because I, I think I could do that. I could do that. You can't go to the gym, but you can go yeah, sit For 100 bucks a day, know. I would do that. If that, that was a job, <laughs> we'll pay you $100 a day to sit at home and be a juror. No, that's, that sounds so. terrible, actually. It'd be pretty boring. Not uh, every day. But uh, I, I, I'm curious. You know, I, I'm curious. Okay, I so hope I don't get selected, but I'd like to show up for a day and just have a day. You know? I hope you do. Not because you, not because it's the opposite of what you said, but because I'm you know, mildly curious as to how this process is going to look. Mm-hmm. And moreover, I'm curious now what types of trials, you know, would, would necessarily require a jury present. So like there, cause there's probably a I list mean, of all of these crimes that you're likely going to determine. What, you know, my dad, my dad was a lawyer. I should know these things, but jury are for <laughs> criminal trials. So like what, would the, what are the possibilities here? Like, if you get hauled away at an anti-lockdown rally, is that a is that just a fine? Like, is that is that a criminal offense? Like, where are we? What are we talking about here? Well, I'm, I'm imagining that there are times when you can you can escalate and take it to court, right? You can contest whatever you've been charged with, mm-hmm. and maybe you go see a judge. In other cases, there might be a jury. Protesting at an anti-vax rally, I'm, I'm guessing, would not qualify yeah, you to have think a jury. So. so these are like, these going to be like heavy duty well, stuff. These are, these are, it's, you know, you got to do some serious shit, I think, to have, I'm imagining in Canada, 12 of your peers. I don't know. <laughs> could be. Could be. It's Canada. There's probably 16 or something stupid. Because <laughs> it's got to be different. <laughs> or maybe, God, you might, you might be sitting there deliberating 
the fate of of someone's you know life forever mm. i could did, be did did he i mean do it I think the, uh, the the juror cast is our next show. <laughs> yeah. or, or you can't talk about it. <laughs> I can't talk about it. That's the show. You ask me questions, I just say, can't talk, can't answer that. Next question. But I can infer from you not answering. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. No, I have never received a letter from the sheriff's office. Wow. Okay. You know, there is a sheriff. How'd you do? I, I did, just you and me talking, right? No one else is listening. I did get one in the Costa Rica years and was able to finagle my way out of it, shall we say. So you got, you got a, like a, what is it? A notice to appear or what is it called? Let's see here. It's not a subpoena. It's what is it? It sounds like that. Yeah. It's uh, it's, this is good. Uh, So the ministry of the attorney general, it's a summons. Oh, you got summoned. It's a Ah. summons. (laughs) You are required to attend the superior court of justice at This time on this day at the City of Toronto. Uh, and you may be selected to serve on a jury from Sheriff Jamie Lee. Thanks, Jamie. Jamie Lee. Um, that sounds like a TV show. It's the <laughs> Superior Court of Justice. Yeah. That's a that's a big court. Yeah. yeah. That's not some little like kangaroo court just around the corner. No. No. This is a... Uh, huh. This is they have a big responsibility that this sheriff has uh, bestowed on me. How do you feel about all of this? I don't know. Mm. Uh, inconvenience, but at the same time, I really don't have anything else to do. So why right, not? There's that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in normal times, it would be like, damn. That was my, my first response was like, ah. Oh. But then I thought about it and I was like, well, it's a little early. But other than that, what's the difference? Oh, you mean like in the day? In the day, yeah, it's 8.30, yeah. you gotta be there, yeah. 8.30 in the morning, you have to be there. Mm-hmm. You gotta get up like you're getting on a plane or some shit. I'm going to work. <sighs> Maybe the sheriff has some flexibility on that. Oh, right, yeah, you can just doodle a new calendar appointment. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'll uh, revise the Google Calendar invitation. Mm-hmm, yeah, fine. just WhatsApp this thing. Do other countries do this? They might, some might, like, they have... have summons people come in and and be on a jury i think any free democratic society that has a justice system of modern (laughs) stripe would (laughs) probably have this yeah this is like COVID. do you know do you know anyone who's who's been summoned and has served okay so hmm, i'm confused by the question do i know anyone who's had COVID, or do i know no who's 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 been been a a juror juror. no i don't um no only on tv yeah, yeah, which I don't know if that's a like in, I don't know if in the, in the states because you know it's more crime if there's <laughs> like more more people know people who've been jurors. This this sounds like it could be like a Letter Kenny episode or something where like what is the Canadian crime that the jury is being called in for? Like, is it you know hay hay stealing? Is it tractor riding? Yeah, it could it, be something to do with know. moose and syrup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Late night syrup hijack with moose. <laughs> you know. I don't know. It could be Guilty hardcore. All though. day. It could be super hardcore. You could, could be, be a juror on a murder trial. He's a murder trial. You could. It could happen. I don't know how I feel about that. I wouldn't feel good about that at all. No. I don't feel good about that. No. Yeah. I would definitely, during the interview, going, you don't want me to do this. I am the wrong person for you. I, I've already made up my mind. The fact that there is a trial indicates to me that he probably did it. He probably did it. The yeah. police, they, they know what they're doing. This is yeah, so, like, why are we here? Let's, let's wrap why this Why are we here? Can we just say guilty now and go home? Yeah, that's definitely how you get out of it. <laughs> I don't know if that would be an interesting, because clearly people must say that all the time. I wonder what, if you could hear whoever the people are that select juries, like all the lawyers that are in there hear them say what their most ridiculous excuses they've heard from people of why they shouldn't be selected. That's a good, like a, like a bathroom reader, Mm -hmm. you know, you're sitting on the can and you're reading all these funny anecdotal excuses of getting out of jury (laughs) duty. (laughs) So you've had, obviously between going on an adventure in a spa and Mm -hmm. receiving mail, Yep. way more fun than I've been having in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. There's nothing going on around here. 
We're just assembling IKEA shit. And just, it's been a uh, well. Hey, that can be fun. But yeah. What are you? Uh, what are you assembling? Well, we're we're making a little office area yep. in the long hallway, so we're doing some storage. I, but here's the thing: I, I hung shelves like floating cabinets. First time ever, I got a stud finder, okay. and I got a laser level and a tripod, and I, you know, I'm drilling like these, you know screws and things into studs and hanging brackets and shelves and stuff and it all lined up wow and it looks good it looks like really good so yeah i'm now installing things on the walls but because covid i guess you know like i was gonna ask like if you ever use task rabbit or something but again it's kind of like me going to be a, a juror number 14 like something to do Normally we would, right? <clears throat> because, um, you know, I'm not very handy. I inherited Ditto. that from my dad. Yeah. And the thing is, though, that, you know, my partner and I, we consider ourselves relatively intelligent people. Mm -hmm. And we're able to follow instructions. And we don't think that our inability to do manual labor is linked to our intellect. Mm -hmm. so that said... We're like, you know, a couple of good YouTube videos and uh, follow the instructions. We can hang some floating cabinets. I know there's a lot of people who may be listening to the show or not who are of this trade who are like, you know, kind of throwing up in their mouths a little bit. <laughs> Heard that talk before. About <laughs> but you know what? It wasn't all that hard. Normally, like right. not COVID times, I got to work. You got to work. We got things to do. We're busy. We got somebody to come in and do it. Right. But this, uh, this time it was like, let's do this together. But I want to say this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Men and women are very different. <laughs> In a lot of respects. Right. When's the book come out, Corey? <laughs> and I'm going to tell you now, if, if you want to know, there's two areas. And we were talking about this in the car on the way home today. Mm -hmm. There's two ways that I think you can determine whether or not a relationship is going to work long term. Number one, Great. I want you to, in your pajamas, on the couch when the internet goes out. Number one, oh, well, and that internet's going out for a while. Yep. You guys are together. Figure it out. Let me know how that goes. Number two, you're putting together IKEA furniture. That's the ultimate litmus <laughs> test for a relationship. If I were a marriage counselor, I would have yep. one of those two or both of those scenarios take place. And then I would say, okay, this is, we're going to go from here. I like that. I like that. It's a thought. I'm I've heard people today. say grocery shopping too, although... We do that very well. That's not a problem at all. Oh, no. 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 There's no. We, th we thought we did. You guys are young. Mm -hmm. As you get older, I'm going to tell you, you're going to realize that you don't, you don't shop well together. Okay. You know, she wants to spend way more time in the store than you do. Well, that's definitely true. Yeah. That's and, definitely and true. And there's going to be a breaking point. <laughs> that's that's going to come out. <laughs> and... <laughs> Oh, I just gonna... mean groceries, only groceries, just supermarket shopping, not all shopping. Yep. Nope. Supermarket. One day someone's going to throw some keys at you and say, go get them yourself. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Way Back five. to the Ikea furniture too. Okay. That's a good one. All right. So in, in Toronto, are you seeing that things are starting to kind of improve? You know, I'm going to be really honest with you. I'm not seeing anything. I, I don't, I, we went on our trip last weekend and I haven't think, I haven't gone anywhere all week. Yeah. Um, so, and I don't really, I'm on, off Twitter now, basically. Don't watch the news. I really don't. Uh, you got full I, I don't hermit. Know. I'm one of those people now. Good for you though. What a good way to be. I, th I'm trying, I'm, it's not even on purpose, to be honest with you. It's just, I, I haven't been interested and I haven't just been doing it. It's been a habit that just, I, I've been thinking about you know, reading and doing other stuff and working and whatever. Um, you know, things are not great out there. I know that and numbers are up and whatever, but I haven't really paid much attention to it. I went the other way. Um, I started paying attention again, not, not necessarily for any reason. Then it's interesting to know why I I'm told I can't go to work. Mm -hmm. I went to work by the way, a couple of times. This is great. Like there's no traffic downtown. There's places to park everywhere. I go into my office. I'm the only person there. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> I advise it. Those that are under, you know, work from home order. Yeah, go to work. It's yeah. pretty great. But other than that, I mean, like 
I'm trying to, maybe, maybe it's just, I, I'm talking to the wrong person about this. Yes. But, but I kind of want to get to a place where I either just accept that this is where we're at now for a very, very, very long time, you know, or, or have some little light at the end, like some little nugget that says, you know, like what, remember when, when Trudeau would said, you... remember when Trudeau said, you know, try and avoid speaking moistly. <laughs> I sure do. I want to get there again. I want to get back to that place or, or get to that place where I'm like, the light is, Hey, you know, we're going to get to a stage in the middle of the summer where we're going to start living with this thing this way. You know, something that says this is what our society necessarily will function like for the next couple of years. You know, I do think we're close to that. I know it doesn't seem like it, but I, I we're still at a stage where a lot of kids under a certain age aren't aren't vaxxed. So we're still working through that. And once that happens, the schools will, you know, be a lot, you know, um, be able to function a lot more organically than they currently are. But I think, you know, we've seen this already in, in, in the warmer weather, not to sound like Trump, but in the warmer weather, it does, it does, the numbers decrease. Magically decrease. goes away. Well, it's not magic. I don't, I don't <laughs> think it's magic. It's people are outside and you can be in parks yeah. and you can do stuff and you yeah. not just have to be inside all the time. But I, I think this is, this is the ebb and flow. It, the numbers are going to go up and down indefinitely. And the question is, how do we live with it? Because we're going to have to. So that's over my pay scale but you know what threshold do we have that people who are vaccinated can go around and live their lives with masks on and but basically everything can be open and it's gonna the virus is gonna you know be transmitted but that isn't this grand you know like like a like a flu type of thing and maybe it's not going to be quite like that a little bit more serious but you know in that kind of range where we know it exists we know people are sick and we can just kind of cope uh on a grander scale and i, I think we're, we're moving in that direction but we're not quite there yet we're not there yet um are you good yeah all right i'm good I mean, we're okay i went to the spa last weekend i'm great <sighs> you know the outdoor pools the hot tubs outside and everything oh i know oh my gosh and it, you know in the winter it's fun because it's fucking it was minus 20 yeah. the day we were there and yeah it's pretty cool. It's literally cool, but it's uh, it's fun. There's uh, about an hour north of us a place called Spa Scandinav that we oh, have gone to. That is a uh, Scandinavian outdoor hot cold spa, and it's pretty great. <laughs> it's pretty great. My masseuse told me that I'm not sleeping properly, so I oh, gotta change my. You know, the most privileged sentence ever said. I know. Um, thinking of privilege, I think we're gonna start to uh, fet to ski. You know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Why because not? Why not? We're, we're like in ski country. We have nothing to do. It's a good outdoor activity. Um, I think we're going to ski. I think you should. I think I haven't done that in a very long time. It's, it's very Me fun either. as I remember it. Yeah. Um, I was like 13. Do you remember the last time you skied? It's around there. It's probably yeah. in, in my teens. It was fun then. It was fast. And I was a lot more flexible. So I wonder what it would be like now. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be Bunny Hill all the way. Yeah. I'm, I'm primed. I'm ready to do something outdoors. Okay. Um, I was looking, and let me ask you real quick. I know we're, we're running up against the end of our show, whatever that means. I got nothing. I mean, you know, I got jury duty in a week and then I get nothing else on my calendar. So I got to ask you, um, because I'm thinking we've got so many outdoor rinks around here it's crazy balls they're everywhere (laughs) like and they're just free skates all over the place Mm -hmm. um should a guy like me just go to canadian tire and get a pair of hockey skates yes yeah like for 100 bucks 150 bucks absolutely it's stupid for me like i don't have to go and figure out like what's my like i I don't know i'm just gonna fall on a bunch of shit right so i might as well just buy some canadian tire skates you don't need nice skates to be on like an outdoor rink Five times a year. No. Five. Two before I give up. <laughs> this is my new thing. I'm going to walk up the hill, lace up. That's what you say, right? And I'm yep. going to skate. Yep. We, we we skated. Remember when we skated? Yeah, I do remember that yeah, in that Old nice. Port. Yeah, in yeah. Old Montreal. But, you know, I had this idea, like this vision. You go up there. I, I go for a walk almost every day up and around the mountain. I use the word mountain. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, <laughs> whatever. 
but up there, when I, the, the rink is empty almost all day long, and I'm like, oh man, I want to get like some skates and a stick mm -hmm. and a puck. And just skate around like with the stick and the puck and stuff, you know, just listen to some tool in my headphones, <laughs> just like skate around. Dude, you have to do that. It's okay. so much fun, uh, um, especially if it's, is it, is it natural ice or is it artificial ice? Uh, what do you mean? Like, do they make it or is it like they just wait? They, they for take ice a truck freeze? full of water and they flood the park okay. and okay. they make, and then beside it is a, is a boarded off hockey rink. And then I go down the road. There's another rink. I go down. It's like Quebec. <laughs> it's like it's poutine and hockey rinks everywhere. I think you should do that. Okay. Your ankles will be sore the first couple of times, but after that, you'll be you'll be I'm fine. Good that. I just yeah. wanted your advice because I know you skate well and you it's play fun. hockey. And I. Uh... But with outdoor rinks, like you don't need the like the ice isn't like it's not an it's not an NHL rink. It's not like super nice ice. So actually having like dull skates is actually, I find a little bit better because it's easier to turn. It's easier to like, because the ice is like real, you know, it's bumpy and everything. So yeah. Yeah. I'm catching myself going up the hill and I don't know if this is because I'm Canadian, but maybe, maybe I'll close on this idea. Mm -hmm. Whenever I watch a little game of pickup or shimmy and I hear the sound of the skates and the sticks and the banter, it is the most Canadian thing I've ever heard. Like it's beautiful. It's a it's a great sound. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm Corey. I'm uh, I'm Jerry number fourteen. Number fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> this was the ISOcast. And you're guilty. Okay.